Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, today I want to talk about um, some research I did uh, about five years ago. Um, not my main research, but uh, something which I found interesting and which is related to my family, in fact. Okay, so introduction to the Northcroft collection relating to the Tokyo war crimes trials of 1946 to 48. Documents held at the Macmillan Brown Library, University of Canterbury, Christchurch, New Zealand. Um, and I presented this uh, presentation at um, the IAJS 12th Annual Conference at ritz Makan University in Kyoto in December 2016. All right, um, this is the outline of the presentation. Um, who was Sir Erima Harvey Northcroft? What is the Northcroft collection and why is it important? What are some of the highlights, future research and concluding remarks? And then I have a bunch of appendices, further reading, list of prosecutors, the charges, summary of verdicts and sentences. Uh, the blue text is actually, it goes to, it's hyperlinks, but, um, uh, we won't be able to use those in this uh, particular presentation format. All right, whoops. So who was Sir Erima Harvey Northcroft? He was born in Pokatika on the west coast of the South Island of New Zealand on the 2nd of September, 19, 1884. He was the son of Leonard Northcroft, a share broker, and his wife, Louisa Pello James, and the fifth of seven children. Big families were quite normal in those days, weren't they? Um, his secondary school, Wellington College, a state secondary school in Wellington, New Zealand. Uh, he was enrolled at Auckland University College in 1903. He commenced a law practice in Hamilton in 1907. He married Violet Constance Mitchell, on the 2nd of December, 1908, on his 24th birthday. His law practice in, was interrupted by World War I. He served as an artillery officer in the New Zealand Expeditionary Force. Uh, he was mentioned in dispatches in 1918. He attained the rank of Lieutenant Colonel and was awarded the DSO, Distinguished Service Order. He was briefly Director of Education for New Zealand troops in the UK. And in 1919, he returned to New Zealand and resumed his law practice in Hamilton. Um, and here, Erima as a young man. Erima means five in Maori. The family was not Maori, but he was the fifth child. In 1923, he moved to Auckland to join a law firm there. Uh, he appeared as a barrister in various cases in all courts. Uh, in 1934, he took over from the leading criminal lawyer, A.C. Hanlon, as senior counsel to defend William Bailey on charges of double murder, so his name became widely known. In 1935, he was appointed judge of the Supreme Court of New Zealand at Christchurch. He was a great believer in common sense and the orderly dispatch of business. It was sometimes said that he ran his court like a military orderly's room, he certainly was a quick worker and preferred to deliver judgment orally at the conclusion of argument rather than reserve his decision as most other judges would have done. His work style enabled him to assist some of his somewhat more reflective judicial colleagues, although his judgments were workmanlike rather than erudite. This is uh, GP Barton uh, Northcroft Eri Mojave from the Dictionary of New Zealand Biography Te Ara, the, the Encyclopedia of New Zealand. Uh, and there is a URL, which I hope is still current, but this is five years after the event, so. Um, he was a member of Auckland University Council from 1924 to 1935. From 1927 to 1933, he was Deputy Judge Advocate General of the New Zealand Army. So he was a military judge and from 1933 to 35, he was Judge Advocate General. 
1939, he was appointed District Artillery Officer, Southern Military District, District and later Fortress Commander of Littleton Sumner area. His judicial and military background made him an obvious choice for a New Zealand judge on the International Military Tribunal for the Far East, IMTFE. Despite lectures from Douglas MacArthur, he strove to maintain judicial independence and integrity in an unsympathetic, even hostile atmosphere. He tried to make a realistic military assessment of circumstances of defendants charged with war crimes. His service on the tribunal was unique in New Zealand legal history and earned him a knighthood in 1949. On return to New Zealand in 1948, he continued judicial work as before in the Supreme Court and Court of Appeal. Uh, again, this is from Barton. Northcroft had few reservations about his own abilities. He had a commanding presence and a voice of deep resonance, which was used to good effect in his advocacy. His principal recreation, particularly in his years in Auckland, was yachting, an activity he missed when he moved to Christchurch. Northcroft was a friendly man, sympathetic, understanding, and of broad humanity. Socially gregarious, he greatly enjoyed the camaraderie of colleagues and like-minded friends. He died in Christchurch on the 10th of October, 1953, survived by his wife and two daughters, one of whom, Nancy, that's Anna Holmes Northcroft, was a leading New Zealand town planner. And there they are together um, in the photograph on the right. Um, Barton must have known uh, uh, Erima, I think. So Justice Northcroft re resided at Iron ha Ironside House, 383 Montreal Street, Christchurch. It says it's a restaurant nowadays, but in fact, uh, I've since heard that this may not be exactly the place, but it was somewhere around this part of the, town, uh, the city of Christchurch. And this is my personal involvement and interest in this matter. Um, my maternal grandmother was born in Northcroft and she was a cousin of Sir Erima Northcroft. They both appear on the family tree comp compiled by Erima's daughter, Nancy, in January of 1952, the year before her father died. The first known Northcroft is William, found in a field in Scotland in 1705. Does that make the Northcrofts Scottish, I wonder? Uh, this tree is now kept by Phoebe Field, nay Northcroft in Christchurch, New Zealand. So Northcroft and Lord Patrick. Family members and others have suggested that the IMTFE shortened Erima Northcroft's life, and it must have been a difficult assignment. Away from his family for most of three years in a land where very little English was spoken, Japan, and with personality clashes and disagreements between the judges. So the work was not easy. Uh, Lord Patrick, the bachelor Scottish judge representing Britain was, like Erima, an experienced judge in the highest court within his jurisdiction, unlike some of the others. Together they formed, Northcroft wrote, a United Kingdom New Zealand bloc of two. They both disliked and did not respect the legal acumen of the Australian President Webb. They were about the same age and veterans of World War I. They disliked the social activities of the expatriate community in Tokyo. They were both keen fishermen and outdoorsmen, like Sir Ernest Sato, who I, he's my main study, and other foreigners, mainly diplomats before them. They rented a cottage at the magnificent Lake Chuzenji, north of Tokyo, where they spent weekends walking, talking, arguing, drinking beer, and in Patrick's case, whiskey. And it seems the health of both men suffered. Um, and here's the source for this information. Anne Trotter and Kirsten Sellers. What is the Northcroft collection and why is it important? The IMTFE, which presided over the Tokyo war crimes trials, 
was in session from the 29th of April 1946 to the 12th of November 1948. It was charged with bringing the highest levels of Japanese war criminals to trial. The tribunal consisted of 11 members from 11 nations, Australia, Canada, China, France, Great Britain, India, New Zealand, the Philippines, the Netherlands, the Soviet Union, and the USA. Justice Northcroft was chosen to represent New Zealand on the bench. After the trial in January 1949, he donated his nearly complete set of trial documents to the University of Canterbury College, which is now the University of Canterbury. It is now one of the most complete sets of IMTFE documents in the world. It consists of almost 380 volumes or 110,000 pages. Its rarity and increasing importance as other originals have dwindled, disintegrated and been lost is acknowledged by UNESCO, which inscribed it in 2010 on its Asian Pacific Memory of the World MOW register. Okay, here's some of the background um, of how the uh, Northcroft papers ended up where they did. Type letter from Erema Harvey Northcroft to the chairman of the College Council at Canterbury University College, dated 27th of January 1949. Dear Sir, I have been absent for three years in Japan, where I was engaged as the nominee of the New Zealand government on the International Military Tribunal for the Far East. The tribunal undertook the hearing of indictments preferred by the governments, government of the United States of America and of 10 other countries against certain major war criminals, Japanese nationals. These trials were important as they, with those at Nuremberg, were the first trials in which international criminal law was being applied in this way. They were important also as much historical matter of present and future interest was presented and placed on record. It seemed to me appropriate in the circumstances that my own set of records of the trial should be given to your college to be placed in the library for the use of students. They are not likely to be of value or interest to ordinary degree students, but may be of assistance to research students, both in international law and more particularly in history. I have accordingly handed over the documents to your librarian and hope they will be acceptable to your counsel. He did not include his copy of the judgment of which he had only one copy, which he was lending to a friend at the time. Whoops. He expected more copies to arrive in New Zealand soon and that the British Foreign Office or US Department of State would publish it in due course. Okay, so here's the Macmillan Brown Library at the University of Canterbury, which I was, I was there for a couple of days. And it's a very pleasant place to study with a small reading room and helpful staff. Strongly recommend it. Whoops, we're going backwards. Why are we doing that? Okay, so here's the reading room. Okay, so what are some of the highlights? In just two days, and on my first visit, it was impossible to do more than scratch the surface of the very extensive archive. However, there is a very good explanation of the collection online. There's the URL right there. It comprises 378 volumes as follows. Index and finding guides, transcripts of proceedings, final addresses, digestive transcripts, motions presented to the court, rulings and orders of the court, prosecution documents, proceedings on chambers, exhibits, judgment and annexes, appendage documents relating to judgment, separate opinions of the justices, miscellaneous and extra and duplicate material. So I decided to look at a specific thing. So I looked at the following. Uh, volume 32 of transcripts of proceedings 22nd to 27th November 1946, which was exactly 70 years ago. Uh, the reason I started here was because I first looked up Kishi Nobusuke in the index and found a reference to him in this volume. Kishi, who later became Prime Minister of Japan twice, was not indicted. 
So unsurprisingly, there is not much about him, but the reference led me to the diary of Kido Koichi. Kido, uh, Marquis Kido, kept a diary of which a partial English translation has been published from 1930 to 1945, which was voluntarily turned over to the prosecution and was relied on heavily during the trial. He was Lord Keeper of the Privy Seal, 1940 to 1945, and the closest advisor of Emperor Showa. He was convicted of war crimes and sentenced to life imprisonment, but released in 1953. Okay, these are photographs of transcripts of the proceedings, the first pages of volume 32. Um, Joseph William Ballantyne was called as a prosecution witness about the hands off China Amor statement by the Japanese government of April 17th, 1934. Then I looked at biographical sketches of 11 judges and 28 defendants. Lists of Japanese cabinet members, box number 336, which is uh, an item which is unique in the Northcroft collection. So uh, this is a biographical sketch of Sir William Webb, the Australian president of the tribunal. If you want to check this, you can always pause the video and read it through. Okay, here are the judges appointed by General MacArthur. For the USA, John Higgins, replaced by Major General Kramer uh, in 19, July 1946. The USSR, Major General Zarayanov. Uh, in the UK, for the UK, William Donald Patrick, Lord Patrick. For the Netherlands, Bernard Victor Aloysius Rilling, Bert Rilling, who wrote a dissenting judgment. Australia, Sir William Webb, the president. Canada, Sir Edward Stuart MacDougall. China, Mei Ju Wow. Uh, France, Henri Bernard. And Philippines, Delphine Jaranilla. And New Zealand, Eri Mahavi Northcroft. Uh, India, uh, uh, the Indian judge was Radhabinod Pal. He produced a 1,235 page judgment included in the Northcroft archive in which he dismissed the legitimacy of the IMTFE as victor's justice and stated that each and every one of the accused must be found not guilty of each and every one of the charges in the indictment and should be acquitted. Not much ambiguity there. Uh, there was an active lobby in the UK questioning the legality of the trials in New Nuremberg and Tokyo. So he was reflecting not just his own views, obviously. Okay, here are the judges in court. Uh, Northcroft is second from the right uh, down, let's see, down here, that's Harry Mojave Northcroft. Lord Patrick is fourth from the left. One, two, three, four, that's Lord Patrick. Pal is on the far left, perhaps uh, appropriately. And uh, Sir William Webb is here, okay. Okay, and here's the chamber with the tribunal in session. The bench of judges is on the right, over here. Prosecutors in, in the back and defendants on the left. Okay, here's a list of Japanese cabinet members from 1927 onwards from the Northcroft collection. I, I photographed this list. Um, so ministers left to right, prime minister, foreign minister, home, finance, war, naval, judicial, education, agriculture and forestry, commerce and industry, communication, railway, welfare, greater East Asia without portfolio. So uh, these, that's the full cabinet for various years.
Okay, here are the defendants in court. Of the 80 Class A suspects detained at Sugamo Prison in Tokyo, only 28 were brought to trial at the IMTFE. Uh, I think that's Togo there, isn't it? Uh, Tojo, sorry. So here are the 28 defendants, 15 in the back row. Uh, oh, here are the 15 in the back row. Hashimoto, Kingoro, Koiso, Kuniaki, Nagano, Osami, Oshima, Hiroshi, Matsui, Iwane, Okawa, Shume, Hiranuma, Kiichiro, Togo, Shigenori, Matsuoka, Yosuke, and Shigemitsu Mamoru. And then uh, Sato, Kenryo, Shimada, Shigetaro, Shiratori, Toshio, Suzuki, Teichi, and Itagaki, Seishiro. And the ones with an asterisk are, were enshrined secretly at Yasukuni Shrine in 1978. Okay, these are the remaining uh, 13 in the front row. Uh, Doihara Kenji, Hata Shunroku, Hirota Koki, and Minami Jiro, Tojo Hideki, Oka, Takasumi, Umezu Yoshijiro, Araki Sadao, and Muto Akira. Then uh, Hoshino Naoki, Kaya Okinori, Kido Koichi, and Kimura Heitaro. And you should remember that um, the Japanese custom, which is observed here, is to put the family name first, which is why I've put them in family name in capital letters to clarify. All right, these are the defendants in a bus with windows obscured and military police escort heading to the courthouse at Ichigaya in Tokyo from Sugamo prison, or perhaps coming back from the courthouse. It's hard to tell, in fact, impossible to know just from this. Um, probably heading to the courthouse where I would suppose. And here are the, the professions of the defendants, civilian officials, military officers, and other, uh, other being Okawa, the political philosopher who was found mentally unfit and charges against him were dropped. So we've got nine civilian officials and 18 military officers. All right, so there is a controversy. 14 class A war criminals, 12 of whom had been convicted, were enshrined secretly as martyrs of Showa, that's Showa Junnansha, on the 17th of October, 1978 at Yasukuni Shrine, after agreement in principle between the shrine and the health and welfare ministry on the 31st of January, 1969. This was revealed to the media on the 19th of April, 1979, almost 10 years, in fact, over 10 years later. Uh, and the controversy started in 1985, which continues to this day. Uh, those who were enshrined as martyrs, which you might say was the polar opposite of war criminals, were the following. Uh, the ones who are sentenced to death by hanging, those who received lifetime imprisonment, 20 year imprisonment, and um, died before judicial decision was reached. All of these were enshrined as martyrs at the Yasukuni Shrine in Tokyo. All right, so these documents are of particular interest to historians of Japan and international relations in the first half of the 20th century. Uh, as you can see, it's a box with uh, documents related to the judgment, study on prosecution, phases on Japan's aggressive war. So the appendage, appendage documents related to the judgment is made up of material believed to be unique to the University of Canterbury. Uh, 
the study on prosecution's phases on Japan's aggressive war was created at the instigation of the office of the president, Sir William Webb. It is divided into two volumes. Volume one includes uh, those things. I don't think I shall read them all. I should just let you pause the video if you wish to. And volume two includes the following here. All right, so prosecution phase on domination of North China and China. The Chinese had met the Japanese occupation of Manchuria with a boycott of Japanese goods. After the continuing advance in North China, students indulged in anti-Japanese de demonstrations and a general ill feeling persisted among the Chinese people. The Chinese government, however, never refused to negotiate with Japan on the main issue, namely the Japanese attempt to separate North China from China proper. In May 1935, on the excuse of the assassination of two Chinese in the Japanese concession at Tianjin, Japanese demanded the removal of high-ranking military officers and the withdrawal of various troops and government officers from the region. John Goet, uh, I'm not sure if that's the correct pronunciation, Goet, Goet, experienced reporter of Far Eastern Affairs was in Peiping at this time. So about my future research, this is not my main research, which is connected with Sir Ernest Sato and Anglo-Japanese relations in the Bakamatsu and Meiji periods. And in fact, Sato's whole life, I should say. Though there are intriguing connections with it, for example, Kido Koichi was a great nephew of Kido Takayoshi or Koin of the Choshu clan, an important figure in the Meiji, early Meiji period. Um, I would like to spend more time with the Northcroft collection and perhaps develop a specific research topic from it. I feel strongly that others, Japanese and non-Japanese researchers should also be encouraged to do so in the future in keeping with the donor's original intentions. I saw nothing about atrocities in the two days during which I visited the archives, and I believe these have been well documented in, it must be said, gruesome and appalling and controversial detail by Lord Russell of Liverpool in his Knights of Bushido. Russell was a legal advisor at both Tokyo and Nuremberg with a similar career background to that of Erima Northcroft. The trial documented here was of course of the elite, the war leaders in the Japanese cabinet for their criminal responsibility under international law. Um, very few, if any of them, would themselves have used a pistol, rifle or bayonet in anger during the war years. They were really too old, I think. But they gave the orders, or at least did not countermand or stop orders by their subordinates from being carried out. Was such negligence criminal? This was one of the charges in the trial, count 55. Concluding remarks, I hope to have shown in this presentation why the Northcroft collection is very important as a record of a major international criminal law trial of the 20th century. Legal scholars can examine the trial's jurisdiction, legality of proceedings, precedents, etc. Historians of various fields, for example, legal, military, imperial, diplomatic, etc., sociologists and anthropologists will find a vast array of primary source material some of it only held in the Northcroft collection. And there have been online comments by James Burnham Sedgwick introducing the collection and unique items. There's been an NHK special drama. Um, there's been Chinese documentary broadcast in 2015 and uh, NHK program on the trial, on, which is now on YouTube in Japanese. Uh, and the IMTFE building at Ichigaya, Tokyo, formerly the Imperial Japanese Army headquarters, is now part of the Ministry of Defense, the Boe Sho. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, there are these appendices, which I don't propose to go through uh, talking about, 
right now, but um, what I can do is just uh, go slowly, go through them uh, and allow you to pause the video if you wish to read them. So I'll do that now. So there's Appendix 1. Oyster and Cryer. Uh, the Diary of Marquis Kiddo, etc. And Appendix 2, the list of prosecutors which you can pause and go through slowly if you like. And the charges, class A, class B and class C charges. And the counts. and offences. And a summary of verdicts and sentences. So G is guilty. Uh, X, uh, not guilty, I think. Let's go to the end and see what, check the, yes, G is guilty, X is not guilty, O is blank, and U is other. And the names in red were the ones enshrined at Yaskuni Shrine in 1978. Okay, so thank you very much indeed. That concludes this presentation.